Chapter 9 And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star from heaven fallen unto the earth, and there was given to him the key of the pit of the abyss. And he opened the pit of the abyss, and there went up a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And out of the smoke came forth locusts upon the earth, and power was given them, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was said unto them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only such men as have not the seal of God on their foreheads. And it was given them that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when it striketh a man. And in those days men shall seek death, and shall in no wise find it, and they shall desire to die, and death fleeth from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared for war, and upon their heads as it were crowns like unto gold, and their faces were as men's faces. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions, and they had breastplates, as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses rushing to war. And they have tails like unto scorpions and stings, and in their tails is their power to hurt men five months. They have over them as king the angel of the abyss, his name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in the Greek tongue he hath the name Apollyon. The first woe is past. Behold, there come yet two woes hereafter. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the horns of the golden altar which is before God, one saying to the sixth angel that had the trumpet, Loose the four angels that are bound at the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, that had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year, that they should kill the third part of men. And the number of the armies of the horsemen was twice ten thousand times ten thousand. I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates as of fire, and of hyacinth, and of brimstone. And the heads of the horses are as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths proceedeth fire, and smoke, and brimstone. By these three plagues was the third part of men killed by the fire and the smoke and the brimstone which proceeded out of their mouths. For the power of the horses is in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails are like unto serpents, and have heads, and with them they hurt. And the rest of mankind who were not killed with these plagues repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship demons and the idols of gold and of silver and of brass and of stone and of wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. And they repented not of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. End of chapter 9 Chapter 10 And I saw another strong angel coming down out of heaven, arrayed with a cloud, and the rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left upon the earth. 
and he cried with a great voice, as a lion roareth. And when he cried, the seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders uttered their voices, I was about to write. And I heard a voice from heaven, saying, Seal up the things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. And the angel that I saw standing upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his right hand to heaven, and swear by him that liveth for ever and ever, who created the heaven and the things that are therein, and the earth and the things that are therein, and the sea and the things that are therein, that there shall be delay no longer. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he is about to sound, then is finished the mystery of God, according to the good tidings which he declared to his servants the prophets. And the voice which I heard from heaven, I heard it again, speaking with me, and saying, Go, take the book which is open in the hand of the angel that standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel, saying unto him that he should give me the little book. And he saith unto me, Take it, and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but in thy mouth it shall be sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand, and ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And when I had eaten it, my belly was made bitter. And they say unto me, Thou must prophesy again over many peoples, and nations, and tongues, and kings. End of chapter 10 Chapter 11 And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and one said, Rise, and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. And the court which is without the temple leave without, and measure it not, for it hath been given unto the nations. And the holy city shall they tread under foot forty and two months. And I will give unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks, standing before the Lord of the earth. And if any man desireth to hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth, and devoureth their enemies. And if any man shall desire to hurt them, in this manner must he be killed. These have the power to shut the heaven, that it rain not during the days of their prophecy, and they have power over the waters to turn them into blood, and to smite the earth with every plague as often as they shall desire. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that cometh up out of the abyss shall make war with them, and overcome them, and kill them. And their dead bodies lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. And from among the peoples and tribes and tongues and nations do men look upon their dead bodies three days and a half, and suffer not their dead bodies to be laid in a tomb. And they that dwell on the earth rejoice over them, and make merry, and they shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. And after the three days and a half the breath of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them that beheld them. And they heard a great voice from heaven, saying unto them, Come up hither, and they went up into heaven in the cloud, and their enemies beheld them. 
and in that hour there was a great earthquake, and the tenth part of this city fell, and there were killed in the earthquake seven thousand persons, and the rest were affrighted, and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe is past. Behold, the third woe cometh quickly. And the seventh angel sounded, and there followed great voices in heaven, and they said, The kingdom of the world is become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign for ever and ever. And the four and twenty elders who sit before God on their thrones fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God, the Almighty, who art and who wast, because thou hast taken thy great power and didst reign. And the nations were wroth, and thy wrath came, and the time of the dead to be judged, and the time to give their reward to thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear thy name, the small and the great, and to destroy them that destroy the earth. And there was opened the temple of God that is in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his covenant, and there followed lightnings and voices and thunders, and an earthquake and great hail. End of chapter 11 Chapter 12 And a great sign was seen in heaven, a woman arrayed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she was with child, and she crieth out, travailing in birth and in pain to be delivered. And there was seen another sign in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his heads seven diadems. And his tail draweth the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon standeth before the woman that is about to be delivered, that when she is delivered he may devour her child." And she was delivered of a son, a man-child, who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and unto his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that there they may nourish her a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels going forth to war with the dragon, and the dragon warred and his angels. And they prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast down, the old serpent, he that is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was cast down to the earth, and his angels were cast down with him. And I heard a great voice in heaven, saying, Now is come the salvation, and the power, and the kingdom of our God, and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, who accuseth them before our God day and night. And they overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb, and because of the word of their testimony, and they loved not their life even unto death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe for the earth and for the sea, because the devil is gone down unto you, having great wrath, knowing that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast down to the earth, he persecuted the woman that brought forth the man-child. And there were given to the woman the two wings of the great eagle, 
that she might fly into the wilderness unto her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent and the serpent cast out of his mouth after the woman water as a river that he might cause her to be carried away by the stream and the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the river which the dragon cast out of his mouth and the dragon waxed wroth with the woman and went away to make war with the rest of her seed that keep the commandments of god and hold the testimony of jesus End of chapter 12